Well, first things first, can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me? Ah, can you see me? Can you hear me? <laughs> Let's get that bit right. No one is born an Olympian. I think. <clears throat> You are showing, you might be showing some adverts, so sorry about that. <laughs> that should stop the adverts now. Hey, hey, sound good, picture good. What I'm doing, so you, if you're wondering, I'm looking at a, a screen monitor down here so I can read your comments. There might be a bit of a delay before I can read your comments out uh, and we can talk through the stuff. Hello, how are you all doing? Final check, can you hear me, can you see me? See and hear you perfect, thank you. Hi Frogster, be nice to Frogster, my top admin there. <laughs> Philip Hills, Pistol Pete. Detecting Hampshire, Angling Addict as well. You should all know who Angling Addict is by now, shouldn't you? <laughs> Loud and clear, hi all. There you go. Probably going to have me bending down a lot like that in a minute. But okay. Do you like my nice little setup? Casually placed rods, uh, some lure boxes, some books I can read. <laughs> okay. Uh, hello from Portugal. Is there someone from Portugal? Whereabouts is everyone from? Uh, bad boys here. Michael Pergam's here. Uh, John, yes and yes. Yeah, thanks for the feedback. I think we're ready to go then. Um, some familiar names. Hello. I've really caught the sun today. I've been out in the kayak. I had to stop fishing because the southwesterlies are really pushing in and I was down tired of our southwesterlies. Uh, um, lots of sun, lots of wind. I had to pack the rods away and paddle for home. Um, so if I'm glowing and I'm red, it's because I didn't put the sun cream on, which is a bit stupid. Okay, right, I think we're there. Have we got a few people now? 86 watching, that's good, isn't it? Uh, hi, Matt from Surrey. Someone from Portsmouth, uh, John Wilson. Hi, John, uh, from Portsmouth. And a couple of minutes, I'll start going through some of these questions. It looks like I'm holding stuff up as well, but we'll see. Angling Addict, right, before we start, he is always banging on, literally banging on, um, about his seekers. Oh, dogs just knocked the thing over. Come on, come on. There. Uh, this is Nelly. It's another one of the props for today. I brought her in. Just looks good on camera, doesn't she? She's getting used to the um, coastal environment. But there you go, there's Nelly. Right, I am allowed dogs in my home. Okay, um, angling addict and the seeker. <laughs> uh, he's always on about the seekers. These are these little metal lures, um, not these, similar to that. And by metal, basically the whole lure is made out of metal. Um, there's a particular brand, Savage Gear, do it called the Seeker. Um, he is your man for that. He's been fishing with those and he swears by them. I've used them this season. I've had more bass on the seeker than any other lure. So I sort of, st <laughs> I kind of wanted to prove you wrong, mate, but you were right. That seeker can be brilliant. I think a lot of it is getting to the lower depths with the seeker. This isn't a seeker, um, but I'll try and dig one out before the end of this live. So uh, thank you very much for that. Angling Addict as well, another good channel to go and look at. Uh, right, they are brilliant. Yes, yeah, so we've got some positive support for that seeker, haven't we? Uh, Southwick, hi Martin. Devon Fishing, hello, you did make it then, <laughs> good. Uh, bam, Robert Bentley, you know the catchphrase. Well, it's not my catchphrase. <laughs> um, great, great to see you here. And Southwest Cornwall. Lucky Craft Lures, I've used them before, I haven't... 
caught on them this year or last year. That's more from not using them. Uh, yes, older seekers as well. Uh, the, the new ones have got a... <laughs> really, you want to check Angling Addict out for this. Uh, this isn't a promotion for him. But um, if you look at how they're made, they're slightly different uh, to some of, some of those Toby spoons as well. So um, there you go. We don't need to talk about seekers anymore. <laughs> uh, who's been out on a boat? Benjamin Twig's been out on a boat all day. Uh, been lovely and relaxing. He chundered a bit. Well, thanks for that, mate. <laughs> um, is that someone from the Ukraine? Anekin? Anekin? I can't pronounce your name, sorry. Um, West Dorset. And a big fan of the Seekers. Also a good band. Okay. Right. Uh, we've got over to seven o'clock. So I just wanted to say I don't know everything. I'm not an absolute expert at lure fishing for bass, but it's probably the element of the sport that I put most of my effort into. Um, I fish with a group of, of three of us, and we're always exchanging ideas, looking at what we're doing. We write stuff down. We try and get better every single season, and we're on a little uh, WhatsApp group between us, me and a couple of friends, and it's constant. Um, so I learn a lot from anglers that are better than me, um, and I, I learn a lot from some of the questions that come in and some of the challenging stuff you say. So please don't think this is a big, I know what I'm talking about, I'm going to tell you it's not. We can all learn a little bit together. So feel free to um, write what you can into the comments uh, and together, together hopefully, uh, we can get out there and catch some more bass after this live um, We'll see how we go. I'm, I'm just pausing because the dog's swinging up and down on a coat, on the coat rail. So I might have to deal with that in a minute. Okay, I'm just going to check these messages. Uh, County Mayo, Ireland, Essex by Zimbabwe. It's a famous place. Uh, where can I get hold of some seekers? We'll come on to that. Um, hello, Chichester. Nice. Chichester. Good bassing. Um, I've only ever had schoolies from Chichester. Used to fish there a lot in the kayak. Uh, Itchenor Del Key as well. Um, thank you, Frogster, our top admin there. If you can like and share, that would be great. Um, what I'm also looking out for is during this live, hopefully we'll reach 20,000. I don't know what I'm on at the moment. It was uh, 19,970, I think. So maybe not during the live, but we're almost there. And I really appreciate every single one of you subscribers. Okay. Connection bad for you, Devon. That's those Devon Hills getting in the way. Uh, Will, that's a good question, the seaweed one. I can only really answer it specifically with lures. Today I just tied a knot on the line. Um, it affects the, I'm trying to think of a way of doing it, um, so if you've got a lure here and you're tied onto the lure, um, just by putting a little knot in the line using a separate bit of line, um, when the seaweed drags down, so it will run down the line like that, um, it can sometimes stop the seaweed, it can affect the action of the lure, um, but I actually did that today, it worked quite well. Um, I think your question might be more about normal um, bait fishing. Uh, someone's saying congratulations, 20,000 subs. I'm not sure I'm quite there. <laughs> North Norfolk. I have fished North Norfolk uh, on a family holiday, blank twice. Um, but I do have some good information that comes in. And there's people do catch bass there um, on the flat sandy beaches as soon as that surf picks up. Um, the bass do run well in North Norfolk as well. Uh, hi Chris, Chris Timms, I recognise you. Thanks for all your comments as well. Philip Evans, 30 to go. 30 to go, we're never going to do it, are we? <laughs> I think people are unsubscribing just so that the live doesn't work so well. <laughs> uh, Somerset, Devon Angler, a great video. And Cumbria. Okay, who's got a question? <laughs> uh, 
who's got a question? We're going to do some questions first and then we'll move on to do the draw at about half past 20 to 8. JW, you've got a few mates. You're going to have to have 30 mates, so that's the only problem. <laughs> I don't mind too much. It's your comments that I really like. Um, how important is it to clear seaweed off lure hooks? It affects the action of the hooks more dramatically on something like... Um, hang on, bear with me. Uh, if you've got uh, like a light plastics, little shads, um, so light plastics are smaller plastics, um, sluggos, things like that, and those very small black minnows. If you've got seaweed on that, I think that affects it more even than the bigger plugs. Uh, they seem to cope with it quite well, the plugs, because you can still control them. Um, but it'll kill something, especially like a do-live stick. Very small. You can see that all right. Um, so, yes, it's important. Get rid of that seaweed um, off the hooks. Not so important if you're bottom fishing, I think. I'm a Billy No mates. Don't count on me. <laughs> Algae blooms in cork. Just one lure. I thought we might have this question. Just one lure. I'm not going to say the seeker. Sorry, Wayne. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, it, it kind of hints at the, the situation for bass, which is, it depends, doesn't it? It depends where you are in the country, what the conditions are like, and I'll have a go-to lure. I always feel more confident with lures that I've caught on um, and that have done well for me. The Zonk, the Yozuri, um, J11s, J13s. If I could only have one, it'd have to be something that can be both a surface lure and a di diver, or something that could deep dive. So something like a J13 um, in a natural colour. Whites, blues, greens, black. Um, but yeah, it does, it kind of, yeah, it's hard to answer. <laughs> Uh, top five cheapest lures for bass, uh, Axia. Have a look at the Axia copies. Uh, we've got some, sure got some Axia ones. You don't get the good quality hooks, uh, but Axia make uh, copies. That's like some sort of copy, that one. Oh, here you go. Yeah, that's an Axia. So, Sometimes the, uh, the bass will only be hitting white fish. If the bait fish are white, they're not interested in anything else. They're sort of focused in on, on those bright ones. And this Axia lure looks like a hound of sorts, doesn't it? Um, I'll show you that in close up. So you're getting those Axia lures for about seven quid rather than about 17. I don't always put the hooks on it as well. <laughs> when you're playing them, no matter what the lure, you want the lure to look like the bait fish. Um, so it needs to be, it needs to be swimming like that. If you're doing that, that looks very unnatural. If you can, sinking, yes. Going lower, coming higher, but not, not that sort of diving up, what have you. If you can try and get that, just stay in contact with it. Um, so yeah, Axia, on oh, another one the Axia do are these. Uh, you see that one all right? Come on, focus camera. Do you know what that one is? A copy of? Yeah, it's a copy of a Pachenko, um, so there's not much in it, particularly with surface lures. Uh, so yeah, check out Axia. There's, um, I do speak to a guy on Twitter regularly, uh, he's got an eBay site, and he's, he only does budget lures, which are copies, um, and I'll try and find a link for him. 
uh, as well. The name will come to me in a minute. Okay, I'm just going to run through some of the questions. One minute. <laughs> Uh, Pachenko's, I prefer it in calmer water, but strong flowing water um, and a swell is really good. Waves, not so good. Um, I'd prefer to push a zonk through the waves, but you're still catching them. Um, but I've had my best, my best catches with surface lures, Pachenko's, going back five or six years with surface lures and, lures and poppers. There's been a good flow of water, but not that sort of wave action. Maybe. Maybe again, that's something uh, me and a couple of friends talk about a lot. Um, is a Toby spoon good for fishing surf? Yes, yep, yeah, southwest down in the southwest. Uh, what length spinning rod do you prefer? A uh, nine foot for me. Uh, I use a seven and eight, but the nine is good. I can fish all day with a decent nine foot. Uh, I know most of you know what what we tend to use on the channel, but that cobalt one is, yeah, nine or 2.7 meters, whatever that is. So yeah, that's, that's a brilliant, brilliant combination of you can fish for four hours, five hours with it. Um, but it can, you can still bring it, bring it round, bring fish round rocks and things like that. Not from the kayak though, seven foot maximum on the kayak. Uh, I'm do Rob, I'm doing the giveaway at about uh, half past 20 to 8, if that's okay. Um, so by all means, pop back. I won't do it before half 8. Uh, I, I have had a go at making my own lures. I'm not going to catch with them. <laughs> I've got a friend, actually, that's um, making his own lures, and he's doing some really interesting stuff. So um, might be something we can bring to the channel, that. Uh, Cheapest lures for bass, we discussed. Uh, length of spinning rod, cheapest lures for bass. Sorry, I'm a little bit behind with these questions. Hello from Plymouth, Sean. I don't know what technique that is. Using the, the wave uh, to disturb some water, maybe. Not sure about that. <laughs> best braid on a budget i've got a list um i think what i'll do if we get any questions um thanks kevsha for for pointing me to that i think what we'll do if we get um there's an email address my email address is in the description matt at saltwaterangler.uk um i can probably answer some of those give you the link so you can go to the right um, the right question or the answer to the right question. So anything to do with gear, budget gear, I've actually got a long list uh, of various things and lines on there. Uh, best time to fish. Statistically, I look back at my um, catch reports early morning, uh, early evening. I'd say early morning. Yeah, it's pretty close. Just as the sun comes up or just as the sun goes down. So just before it goes down, there's the last bit of light some fish are feeding, uh, just as it comes up as well. Uh, Matt Upstall, get a J, J13, a jointed Rapala 13, for two reasons. It's a big bulky lure, it's not very easy to cast, it's very old fashioned, but it will teach you if you're looking for a first lure and you don't want to spend too much money, something that's jointed, uh, it doesn't rattle, they're quite good in murky conditions. I think that's another question. Um, but it also, what you do when you retrieve in and use the tip of the rod uh, can affect how the lure moves. And it's a really good way to learn about how you're affecting the lure as well. So I'd say go for something like a, uh, a lure where it will float, but then when you retrieve it digs down. And J13 is a good way to learn really. Um, they're a bit old fashioned as I've always said, but if you're starting for the first time, definitely give it a go. Uh, foul hooking smaller fish using surface lures, circle hooks. Um, 
debarbed hooks, uh, take the trebles off. Um, speed as well, if you are moving the lure quite fast, you tend to find uh, the hookups are better or cleaner. Um, where they're slower and it's sitting on the surface, uh, you, can, you can sometimes get smaller fish as well. Uh, I've uh, questions on murky water. Um, I don't know what you think, but I've changed again going back to the, my group of friends who fish for bass exclusively. They think that I they think that I'm too particular about the water conditions, whereby um, I'll only fish if it's really clear. And I've seen I've seen two friends catch huge bass in murky conditions so uh, those have been with shads uh, so see what we've got so soft shads things like this in murky conditions bounced along the bottom um, and I've seen I've seen really good fish caught along the bottom. Um, I like to see really clear water but I think I might be wrong there so I'm changing my ways and I'm just going to fish uh, if the conditions are right even if it's a bit murky so uh, I'd suggest give give a go give it a go in murky conditions we might all be surprised uh, what you can pick up. I've used the uh, we've got a question from Mark Green hi Mark thank you I know you're always commenting on the channel as well um, I, uh, I've used both the Tenru, yes, and the Major Craft. I really, I really like the Major Craft. Um, although the Ten, yeah, I'd look at Major Craft. I'm not an expert at the, the real top range rods. I can't afford them. Um, I have used other people's rods and, and the Major Craft I used was really good top range. Um. I'll do a little bit more research, uh, research here. I wonder. I don't know if um, Slippy Limpets might have major craft rods. Um, I know Mark at Manic Fishing has the Tenru. I think he uses the Bulldogs from the boat though. Uh, fishing in the dark, excellent, really good. I haven't, I haven't done as well in the dark, but I haven't put the time in during the dark. Um, always check out. They're called the White Brothers. Um, and there's some videos, I think there's some videos on YouTube still, that they did with the Bass Anglers Sports Fish Society. Um, they fish a lot in the dark uh, in a very strange way, but check out the White Brothers as well, uh, and you might become an advocate of fishing in the dark. So lure fishing in the dark, not a problem at all, obviously with all the caveats about staying safe. Uh, I can physically tell the difference of what that lure is doing um, with a decent rod um, and I think most of you will as well. No questions there. I think uh, LRF setup, so I'm talking about an LRF setup. Is it Black Black Rock? I think Black Rock are the brand there. They do a range of LRF rods and look quite good. Uh, Sean Healy saying dawn or dusk always best. Yeah, I think so. Um, Sean saying he's got that 10 foot Abu Garcia three piece vendetta. Lovely rod. Tough rod that as well. 20k questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I keep turning away. Hang on. We'll get there. J13's good for pike. Thanks, JW. Hi, JW again. Very much a regular commenter. Appreciate that, mate. Thanks. Um, I think the hound, uh, someone's asked uh, Adam Davy lure fishing. The hound, uh, I don't know if I've got an original, I have got an original one somewhere. Hold on. Uh, I haven't got a... I 
Uh, yeah, sorry, cut that. Cut the question a bit short. I am a hound. I like to retrieve quite fast and quite tippy with it. It's really hard to explain. We've had a lot of uh, a lot of people ask how you use a particular lure, and they want to know how to retrieve it. But a lot depends. I mean, if you take two two thousand five hundred, three thousand reels, both those reels will perform very differently. So I could video myself using one. Uh, that's an old pen pen pursuit. Um, but it depends on the rate of retrieve of the reel, uh, how much line's on the spool, whether you've got braid or line. And it looks, it's really hard to get across how to use that lure uh, on a YouTube video. Um, I don't know if we've got any other YouTubers watching, um, but however you do it, I think you need to be there with someone to show how to work a particular lure, unfortunately. But I will try and film that as best as I can this summer. Okay, Mark's loving his lures, J13 we've talked about, nice one. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, see you Will, thanks for watching. Generated show, thanks. Um, okay, Ippinfold uh, asks, Matt, I'm getting a lot of height when casting lures, like I'm trying to land it on the moon, but I'm not getting much distance. Any tips for better casting? A lot of time you've got to punch it, punch it into the wind, depending on the lure. Um, you can use tide and current as well to cast a lure out if it's a floating lure, get it into position. Um, I use two types of casting really, and, and actually it's going to be in the next lure fishing video. Um, so you can you can hold the lure directly over the head, so it's dead straight behind you. I'm going to knock everything over now, <laughs> like that over one side, and then dead straight. That will give you the most distance, and there's a bit of a push and a pull, a bit of a push and a pull. Um, I tend to, if you see me on the videos, I'm just coming over the shoulder a bit too casual, really. But that might be something to do dead straight um, for your bigger cast. And of course, some lures can cast a lot further than others. Those hounds are really good uh, that we talked about earlier. Dexter Wedge, good results. Yeah. If the bass are there, if the bass are there, you, you honestly you can get them on anything. When they're finicky, when they're really finicky, that's where a change in lure can make all the difference. Um, I've seen it. I've seen the difference between a, a white lure and a grey lure. Um, uh, even a different type of surface lure, um, a change can make a difference as well. And even instead of lure fishing, going on to fly fishing, if the bait fish are really small. Uh, there you go. Oh, this is quite hard. Keep up with all these comments. Thanks very much. How many people have we got watching? We've got 162 people watching. Brilliant. Someone's down the trout pond setting up. Who's that? Devon Fishing. Uh, Lardy's joined us. So if you see Lardy commenting, he is one of the admins. Thank you for joining us. Ah, oh, bass from a paddleboard. I have had a bass from a paddleboard actually. Um, the, the main advantage of paddleboards is sight fishing. Uh, so you can see the reefs and remember you're going to be, or well, for my case, six foot up above the water. Whereas on a kayak, you're three foot up. Um, so use that to your advantage, but definitely you'll be picking out the rocks, the reefs on the paddleboard. Um, one of my friends does it quite regularly, he sits down a lot. Um, and obviously you're a bit limited in what sort of conditions you can fish on. But yeah, good luck with that. It's an interesting one. Paddle boarding for bass. Cheap skate fishing uh, is asking, what do you think of some of the copy lures you can get off eBay? I found some that are pretty close to the mark. There are. Yeah, there's great. They're, they're really good. Uh, hooks are the main difference. So if you look at, I mean, the quality of hooks, on, I'll give you a couple of examples. 
Um, the difference you're going to get is this one we were using today. Let's see if you can see the difference. If you can see that, yeah, the camera's not focusing, but basically, uh, the hooks, those blued hooks that you get on something like a Zonk, uh, absolutely brilliant, and they'll stick to your hand. Whereas, budget, this is an X Rap Rapala, um, the hooks start to go, they rust, and there's always the risk of losing the hook. So, um, but as we were saying earlier, you know, some of these copies are really good. Can you tell the difference between that? Uh, that's another. <clears throat> I see the two there. Which one's a Pachenko? And which one's the, I think it's called a Yakazuma. So yes, have a go. Try the eBay ones. Uh, polarized sunglasses I would definitely recommend um, amber color um, or dark brown for inshore fishing and then blue when I'm out out on the boat or kayak um, but that is a real game changer polarized sunglasses cap as well so that you stop the light going in the top of the glasses um, and they might be someone who watches the channel because as you know I always forget them <laughs> uh, Logan, thank you for your message about um, fishing line. If you drop me an email, matt at saltwaterangler.uk, I'm going to compile a list of all the, the gear I recommend for different budgets because um, I chop and change a lot. I mean, you certainly use braid, 18 pounds, 20 pound fluorocarbon as a standard, um, but I do change that as well. I mentioned we're giving these away as well. These are the new drift. Adds, I think Jason over at the Eastbourne, Eastbourne Fisherman is using them as well. I think he's giving some of those away. But basically, they're the same shads that we've used before, but they've got that link. They've got that link in them as well. So Drift has sent us those. But the lure rod that we are giving away, uh, I've actually paid for myself <laughs> to say thanks. Um, I'm really interested in uh, equipment that you can get on a budget that's actually quite good. And this was the best I could find. Um, a Shimano, they're calling it the XT. It's like a beginner's lure, lure fishing setup. That's got a 4,000 size reel on, which is for where I fish is a little bit big. Um, but West Country, Devon, some of those Cornish marks where you're fishing off rocks into deeper water, this would be excellent really good piers jetties so we're going to give that away the fx 4000 uh, and that has got a rating i think it's something like 40 grams as well um, but it's got quite a nice weave quite a nice weave on there as well uh, and then we're also going to give away uh, sorry not the xage um a 3000 hooligan which is again something I've bought for you because I think you get a lot for your money uh, from that reel as well so it's only a full I think about 40 pound reel um, really good looks really good so we'll give that away uh, separately we'll give the um, shads away with the rod and reel so stay tuned I will get on to it in a minute we are at about half past seven. So we'll do a few more questions because I think there's some there. Great for casting. Thanks, Flo. JW, I, I do and I don't debarb my hooks. Some of these lures have got debarbed. Uh, some of them we put singles on. Um, it's more a case of getting around to changing all the lures. Um, I don't debarb the zonks I won't debarb um, uh, 
We've caught plenty of, uh, Daniel, this is a challenging question, I think. We have caught plenty of bass recently at high tide, late in the evening. Is it worth daylight, full sun? It really depends on the venue. Sometimes the bass, um, if there's a reef further out, sometimes the bass will come inside the reef, chase all the bait fish up the beach um, in the early evening at high tide. So high tide can be a brilliant time because uh, the fish, the bait fish can't get out of the reef and the bass come in and they stop them. So what you're really looking for are reefs that funnel the water up onto a beach and I can think of three, I can think of three near me and I've seen it every summer. There'll be one or two occasions where the bass have rounded those bait fish up on the beach at high tide um, and they hit them there. Eastbourne, good, good um, bit of reef fishing between Eastbourne and New Haven. Um, bright conditions are quite good because there's lots of cloudy rock there, sandstone and chalk. Um, so sometimes bright conditions for us it's still a bit cloudy in the water, so we don't have to worry so much. It might be a bit different uh, down in the southwest. Hit that like button. Thanks, Devon Angler. And check out Devon Angler as well. Top bloke. Uh, you could put worms on a lure hook. I think you're more likely to entice small bass with that. You can use a MEPS. A MEPS type spinner. Mm. Which I can't find. Um, someone was asking about I'd, for your bigger um, the sluggo, I tend to use those. Don't worry about using oversized hooks. On something like that, something like that. <laughs> a seven O sounds huge, doesn't it? But uh, that won't bother a bass, big mouth. Uh, right, Dominic, uh, leader knots. The FG knot is king. Um, you need to get <coughs> dog. <coughs> Probably just hear the dog a little bit. Um, yeah, use the FG knot, nice and tight. I wrap the fluorocarbon around my finger, pull it nice and tight. Uh, sorry, wrap the braid around my little finger and then you want a right angle for the fluorocarbon FG knot. Really good and you should be able to tie that blindfolded really. Cooden Beach at Stamco. Uh, you tell them Nelly. <laughs> J Yuki hooks at the front and the middle. They swim the same, so cross the barb a bit in the rear. Yeah, another thing you can do when you're changing treble hooks to single is to um, weigh the hooks and then weigh the lure at the end. I know it sounds a little bit over the top, um, but I've got like a very um, like a very small set of scales, and just to make sure that your single hooks. Um, so if you're replacing, say, something like that uh, on a treble, you're going to make sure they weigh the same. None of these, out of the box, um, out of the box, none of these lures really um, are really weighted perfectly to have that nice flat swimming action this is as close as it gets actually it's good this needle fish uh, okay we will come on to the draw sorry if you're waiting for the draw um, but there's some questions still to answer uh, questions on single hooks and tackle um, drop us an email matt at saltwaterangler.uk and i'll try and answer your question for you I like the hound for distance casting. Happy birthday, Nick Gurr. Hi, William from Belfast.
Yeah, bad bad boy saying only only day fish when it's cloudy. Otherwise, everything at night. That's not a bad little rule to follow. There are some local exceptions where I live, Eastbourne, Hastings, uh, way you can get away with clearer conditions. How many lures do I take with me on a trip? I try and keep it. I try and keep it just to the one box. My secrets in there, um, and in that will be a mixture of soft plastics as well. Um, I try and travel light. <laughs> Thank you, some nice nice comments coming on. Um, AJ, love from India. Nice. Uh, Michael from Egypt, really like bass fishing videos. I want to tell you that the sea bass eat anything. I'm making top water laws and caught so many bass. Bass do eat everything. There's a great list in one of, one of my books of all the things a bass has eaten. Um, and it ranges from, you know, like they'll eat rats, ducks, Um, can I advise about caring for your lures? You've got to, you've got to wash them in fresh water um, and dry in sunlight and then I'll put them back in. I'm not too good at looking after stuff. <laughs> uh, I have used uh, a sounder or a fish finder on the kayak. Uh, I haven't for a couple of years. Um, I have used one in the past. Using a fish finder when you're bass fishing will absolutely drive you nuts. Because you'll be you'll be going over a reef and it'll be pinging, it'll be going fish, fish, fish like that, and you'll be well they're there, they're there, and you might not catch anything. And then you'll do it again and you do it again. I've had a I sat on a mark for about 40 minutes with big fish underneath the the, the finder is showing these big bass swimming underneath the kayak and I couldn't hit them, I couldn't get them. In the end I had a three hook um Paternoster with lugworm on it uh, and pulled in a five pound bass right under the kayak in about six foot of water. So um, <laughs> they're great, they're great, but they will they will ping fish and you'll get really frustrated with a fish finder. <laughs> Not bad for picking up shoals of mackerel, but for bass, um, it can do your head in. Okay, 38 minutes past. I think we'll do, we'll do another five minutes or so of questions if that's all right with you. Um, and then we'll come on and do the draw. I've got a random name generator. And if you've commented um, or you're on this here, they've been putting into that and we'll do the draw in a minute. So what's the biggest bass you had? And on what, uh, what lure? No secrets, it was on the Zonk. Anyone that follows the channel will know that. Uh, Mega Bass Zonk. Uh, I've got some links. Oh, there'll be some links to it underneath that same video of the 12 pound bass so 12 pound bass on one of those and what happened was um, I changed to that I wasn't getting takes on a on a budget lure changed to the zonk straight in uh, that was a great day <laughs> heaviest lure from the shore no some of these poppers are quite heavy aren't they um, there's a new I've been using these lure fishing from Bass sent me, as you can see, and probably tell, I've used that today. And having just told somebody, or just told you all, that you should wash your lures, there's my salted lure. This, this is an interesting one. This is a, a Frankie, and it's from Longin, the lure company called Longin. Really good quality. Uh, and I think that's pushing 40 grams. I think about 38 grams. So I'll give that a go. It's obviously a, creates a lot of disturbance there with that lip. Yeah, give give the surf. I have fished surf beaches in Ireland. 92, 3, 4, 92 to 95 surf beaches in Ireland, um, mostly metals, and actually Dexter Wedge did quite well. We didn't have the choices of lures back then. Um, 
so yes do a video keep it saying do a video targeting mackerel on small spoons there's something coming on mackerel actually I agree mackerel can be great uh, with small lures how far do you usually cast most of the fish I catch are within 20 meters of the cast um, you can get a lure rod out 40 50 meters Ah, resharpening hooks. Another angler I know well, a uh, better angler than me. There's a lot of them out there. <laughs> he sharpens his hooks. He says that is a brilliant idea, sharpen the hooks. So although they're chemically etched and they're high quality like the ones we looked at earlier, it is sometimes worth just sharpening the hooks as well. It can make a difference, particularly if you're using singles on a lure as well, hard lure. There's a lot of merit, I know we've, we've talked about, there's a lot of merit for swapping trebles for singles, mainly uh, damage to fish, other parts of the fish. So fish will take the fish will take that, but these two hooks can cause the fish damage. And unless you're keeping the fish, um, which we don't, yeah, I do keep fish, but the um, majority will go back. These can do it some other damage, so that's the main merit. Um, and hookups are quite good on, on singles. Um, I've missed a lot on surface lures uh, last year. A surface lure with a single. Um, this one I missed fish on, so I've changed that round a little bit. It's looking like a lure shop down here. <laughs> Okay, we're going to come on to the draw. Uh, two lures at a time. No, the only diff the only thing with two lures at a time, you can use a, a teaser, which uh, we were using the other day. So you get a fly. Um, this can make a difference. Like a salmon or a sea trout fly, like that. Various ones. And these replicate replicate something like a sand eel. That's quite a good sand eel one there. Uh, some of them some will float. So you would put that fly let's say you're using that pirate lure there and then this sits on a paternoster. Make sure you can see that. So you're casting both and they're swimming along. That'll float and that sinks. Um, can be a bit clunky, you tend to pick up weed, uh, but it might make the difference if there's smaller fish around. Whew, lots of questions. <laughs> Are we at 20,000 yet? Could admin check for me, please? <laughs> Craig takes the middle hooks out, yeah. South Wales, yes, I have fish there. I actually spent a lot of, wasted a lot of my life Travelling around the country, fishing various marks, uh, Rossilli. Uh, 4,000 size reels, Shimano's all day long. For me, for me, Shimano's really good. Um, what am I using? Uh, Ultegra is as good as in the 4,000. Um, if you spend about 60, 70 quid, you're getting a reel that... Is that a reel? Is that an Ultegra? That is... Yeah, that's the Ultegra. Something like that in the 4,000 size. Brilliant. Really good. I've used pens. Um, I've used other reels, dials as well. But that would be, that'd be my choice. Just get it in a 4,000 size. You can just drop down your lure on a breakwater, and of course, that's where the fish are. <coughs> Been lucky enough to catch two at a time using a teaser fly. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Right, 20k. We're almost there. Almost there. <laughs> Lardy's saying 20,000 subscribers. Yeah. What does that mean? Um, well, I appreciate it. I really, I really do. It's, we have these little landmarks as YouTubers, and um, it's great to have hit that. So thanks for letting us know, Matt. Um, yeah, brilliant. Great, and, and I really do appreciate the input from you. It wouldn't be a channel without you. I know it sounds really cheesy. Um, I think even the dog's laughing at me for saying that. But yeah, uh, it's great. It's really good. All the comments, um, messaging me on the videos. Love it. Really good. Thank you. Uh, Frogs is saying I've got to do a dad, dad's dance because uh, she knows that I do that on the pier whenever I catch a fish. <laughs> 30k next. Yeah, on to the next one. Um, okay. Right, we're going to do... Uh, I'm going to try. I'm going to try and do the giveaway now using this generate thing. Um, I might need some assistance. Hang on. Bear with me. I've put... You'll have to bear with me. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to give away this one first. This is the Shimano rod and reel. So if you have commented, if you've been on this live stream, your name's been inputted. Um, so we'll we'll give this away first. And with that, um, our friends at Drift are going to send you a pack of these for you. These are mine, but um, they'll send you a brand new pack. Uh, I think they've got a few ones be eight of those in there that'd be a really good way to start your lure fishing as well um, there's no white ones in there because I've been using the white ones and that was another question actually uh, what colors do I like I do like a white lure it looks like those herring that we see in bait fish shoals nearby so um, just bear with me one moment and we'll have a look for a random name for the lure rod Computers crash now. <laughs> Bear with me. Bear with me. I'm going to get a technical expert. <laughs> Right, I've got, I've got the experts on it. We, we will be choosing a name. Um, so that's for this XT Shimano. It's really nice, this. In fact, I might get one myself uh, as well. A little bit more beefier lure fishing rod. Um, so we'll draw for that and you get those in there as well. And then when we've done that, uh, if someone wants this as well, I'll do another draw and the second person out of the... Um, computer that's at the moment saying no <laughs> gets that as well and that's it really so I'll, I'm waiting for them to try and sort that out at um, the computer shop uh, thanks thanks very much if you've got any other questions that you haven't had answered um, go to matt at saltwaterangler.uk, drop me an email. And the other thing you can do is join the subscriber list. And the subscriber list should be in the description below. <clears throat> uh, and that will have, uh, I just do regular emails for bass fishing. And I can send you an email. You get one one a month, something like that just to keep you update, cause updated because there's stuff that I can't always put on YouTube as well. So thanks very much. I'm sitting here just talking to you because I haven't got the computer yet. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> but we are going to do the draw, I promise. 
I need to do some sort of song or something like that. Here we go, my assistant has come. Thank you very much, assistant. <laughs> We're gonna do a random, uh, a random name picking draw. And okay, so we're going to pick a random name. I've pressed the button, and the winner is the winner of the lure rod and the reel is Richie Smith. Richie Smith. So, Richie, I hope you're watching. <laughs> um, thank you very much for commenting on the channel recently. Richie, this is yours. Um, I can see who you are. If you message me at matt at saltwaterangler.uk. Uh, there's a way I can check that you are actually Richie. Um, or if you know Richie, or you can see him there, let him know. Thank you. Um, Richie's won that. It's also run the Shad Lures. And HTO Hooligan 3000. This will be going in the post tomorrow to... It's just doing its bit. Daniel Lewis. So Daniel Lewis. Thank you, Daniel. You should be able to see there. Daniel Lewis. Uh, Daniel, you've won the reel as well. And that's it. Thank you very much. Really appreciate all your questions. If, as I say, if you haven't been able to have a question answered, uh, might be something I need to go and find out about, get some heads together and see if we can come up with a better answer for you. By all means, drop me an email on that um, Saltwater Angler email. Sign up for the regular newsletter, that would be great. Um, and I really do appreciate everyone watching. Thank you very much. I've got some lures to tidy up now. <laughs> okay, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. I'm just seeing those last few goodbyes coming in. I didn't want to cut you off. <laughs> uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, good life. Cheers. Thank you very much to our admin as well, uh, Lardy and Frogster. They could have chosen better screen names, couldn't they, really? Lardy and Frogster. Lardy's not Lardy and Frogster's not anything like a frog either. There you go. Stay well. Tight lines. Thanks, Ian. Cheers, Ian. Ian, appreciate all your comments as well. Actually, all of you on there. Sandeep as well. I, I know you regularly comment. Appreciate that. Um, that awkward bit at the end. Yeah, put the phone down first. <laughs> Cheers. Wayne, thank you, Batch. Mark Green, admin team, thumbs up. Agreed. Martin, Ian, uh, John, Devon Angler, thank you for joining us. Matt Upstall, thank you. Fergal Morrissey, we don't want to leave. You're going to have to leave, but Peachy Swell is typing, so we have to wait. <laughs> uh, sequested, thank you. Ziso, Reginondo, Reginondo, nice. Uh, Logan, good night all. Uh, yes, Tony, I'm not sure what you mean. Thanks for all the tips. Big bass times ahead. There will be a big bass on the Saltwater Angler channel this summer. Uh, no dad dance, no, not tonight. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Okay, I think I'm milking it too much. Lovely, cheers, have a good evening. <laughs>